Yo, what's up? Trains here. Welcome back to Diablo 4. I made the route again for the season 1 and so far I really enjoying it. It's better than the first time I played. I would also recommend doing all the renown first before picking a route because you really need the skill points, especially in the beginning because the route can be a bit hard to get started. But yeah, I like it so far, especially with the season aspects and things like that. For my skills, I picked the air spike this time. This is mainly because of the fortify, but I was also thinking about picking the mall here. And I had a good legendary aspect with the wind shear. So for now I have this one, but maybe I will switch it up later. For my core skills, I went for the pulverize. This is mainly because pulverize deals a lot of damage and you can wipe out whole armies with it. So I can really recommend it. Then I picked this one, close enemies, critical strike chance increased. This is also because pulverize, I most of the time will be close to enemies. So basically this means I get 6% increased critical strike chance. And I went for this one just to be able to stay alive a bit longer. For the defensive skills, I went for the earthen bulwark. Mainly because this one uh, gives me unstoppable. And I went for the debilitating roar. This is mainly also because of the fortify and it also reduces the enemy's damage. So this is a really good thing, I think. Especially with the melee character, you're most of the time close to enemies. So having more defense is a good thing. For the companion skills, I picked the poison creeper for now. I will remove this one later, but I also have a legendary that works good with the poison creeper at this moment. So for the Vraaf skills, I went for the trample, just one point for now, maybe I will increase it later, I'm not sure. And I went one point in the mending here, and I went three points in the provocation, because this one got a buff, so I can do a lot more overpower now. I'm also filling in crushing earth here, and I'm trying to fill in these two. In the ultimate skill I didn't pick anything yet, but I will most likely pick the grizzly rage. For the key passives, as you can see, I just made it to here, but I will probably pick one of these, Ursine Strength or the Earth and Might, because Earth and Might will give me all my spirit back, and the Ursine Strength will give me just more health, so more defensibility and more damage. So yeah, so far I really enjoy it, and it is pretty strong I think, so as I said before, I can really recommend doing the renown first because especially in the beginning it is pretty hard to get experience and sometimes you're just a bit lost in what you can do. The items I have so far, just the yellow helm, yellow chest armor, I imprinted this one. So when you fortify your earth skills gain plus two ranks, I think this is a must have. Also plus one to pulverize. For my weapon I have to pulverize, it becomes an earth skill so it will get a lot more uh, plus skills because of this one. For my offhand I went for this one. This is mainly because I am doing a lot of poison damage with my poison creeper. So I was wondering if this one works good with the werebear. For my legendary ring here I went for the imprinted poison creeper active. This is mainly because I never had this one before and I was wondering how good it was. It is okay, I can change this up later, but for now as you can see I have a lot of space. So this is why I imprinted it. And for my amulet, I went for the pulverize, creates a shockwave. And this is my main damage dealer, you will uh, see very soon. Deals a lot of damage, especially when I have the overpower and critical strike together. So yeah, so far it's pretty strong. There is one legendary aspect I would like to have, and I believe it is here. Yeah. I really want this one, so I can uh, keep up my barrier, my earthen bulwark, a lot uh, longer. Drood was the first character I made in Diablo 4, and I still really like it. At the beginning I didn't really like Drood because it is, was very weak, but once you get a little bit of a higher level, you will get a lot stronger, and once you find out a build that fits you, it can be pretty fun. So let's see, what do we need to do, slay the decayed keymaster? Collect the key, alright. Is 
So the main damage dealer here is my pulverize. I still need to farm the root offerings for my spirit boons. For now, I have unlocked this one, so I get more critical strike chance. And I have equipped this one for now. This is just because I can uh, get more overpowers. As you can see, I also have a wolf companion. This is because one of my hearts here, this one, kills have a 6% chance to summon a wolf companion to your side. So, I don't really need it, but I thought it was a fun addition to the build. Let's see, where can we find this key master, this key carrier? Not here. I'm also really looking forward to the ancestral uniques. Or the sacred uniques, doesn't really matter. Because this build can be pretty strong once you have the right items. The only problem I have at this moment with this build is that sometimes you don't have enough spirit. But hopefully we can um, fix this once we equip the key passive. There we have the rotten key. I believe I can already equip my key passive here. Yeah, I'm level 25. So, I think we go for this one here. Nice. We have to run a bit back. It's also a really nice feeling with the Druid. You can stand in enemies a lot more than the Necromancer, for example, or the Mage, or the Sorceress. So let's see. Travel to the archives. Let's do that. Little bit of walking simulator again. Slay all enemies. All right. And the nice thing with this key passive is because you have the shockwave with your pulverize the key passive will activate a lot more because of that nice there we go It's 
Also, always make sure when you hit an enemy, you hit them with the initial blast of your pulverize and also the wave. So there is a little bit of a sweet spot here. Take some practice. But once you manage it, you will kill bosses especially a lot faster. So I can really recommend just trying it out and find a sweet spot for you. And also make sure you keep casting your roar for example because this one will be of cooldown a lot of the time. I find myself slacking a bit when it um, goes about casting my skills. So I would always recommend just pressing your buttons. It will give you a lot more survivability. Nice, we got a legendary here. The first one I have found so far in the level. All the other ones I only have imprinted. So what do we have here? I think we will equip this one. Why not? Not sure how much of the Druid offerings I still need to complete the Spirit Boons. But I believe it is quite a bit. Walking down can be a bit annoying because you will click accidentally on your skills or something like that. Nice, we got another level. Let's see what we can learn here. Let's go for this one. The timers here. Above my experience bar is the timer when I'm uh, doing a guarantee over power. But make sure you don't combo these together because they will count it as one. I believe we can... Nice. Once you get more items, bosses will be easier. It can be a bit hard at the start, especially with the pulverized build. But also once your key passive triggers, you can just slam your pulverized. Nice, we completed it. So now we have the new aspect. Let's equip it in our gear. Let's see, where can we equip this? The new one, this one. What can we do here? I think we go for the armor for now. It is only level 10, but it has plus one rank to earth and bulwark. So yeah, really nice. I believe we have more um, aspects that work together with the earth and bulwark and with the trample for example.
So yeah, this is a quick overview of the root. I really like it and I really enjoy it. As I said before, make sure you have the renown before picking a root, because I think it is a little bit hard to get started. But definitely check it out. For now, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. And I see you in the world of Sanctuary.